I went into cardiac arrest because of a pulmonary embolism. Never had I thought that that was going to happen to me. And my clinicians that saved me in all of the different areas, again, were the ones that either I had trained in the past or I had been involved with somehow in education in the past. I was unconscious for about five days. And after five days when I awoke, I was amazed at the whole event that had happened. I'm a registered nurse, and for the vast majority of my nursing career, I've been in nursing education and hospital-based education. Currently, I work in the simulation education field, and in simulation, we use a variety of high-tech mannequins and other modalities to really increase the fidelity of learning for clinicians in the hospital setting. One of the great things about simulation is that we can bring together interprofessional teams of people. So nurses, physicians, respiratory therapists, all sorts of healthcare providers. And all of these individuals are integral to helping resuscitate a cardiac arrest patient. We emphasize things like quick CPR, excellent chest compressions, managing the airway, quick defibrillation, and getting rapid access so that we can administer life-saving drugs and fluids to that patient. One of the best ways to get access in a cardiac arrest situation is to put in an IO. IOs are very quick, and when we used to do in the past was worry about putting in peripheral lines or central lines, they take an awful lot more time and are oftentimes difficult to get in when a patient doesn't have a pulse. So teaching clinicians about IO insertion in a cardiac arrest situation has been a very powerful part of our simulations. One of the things that I've seen over the years with teaching people to use an IO is they sometimes start off with a little bit of fear. They're used to putting in peripheral lines and thinking that that's really the main thing that they should do to get access for a patient, particularly in a cardiac arrest. So once we start training clinicians on how to use IOs, give them adequate practice, and really increase their confidence levels over time, we do see that they're very focused on using an IO and really want to do it as a first line of for, a resuscit for resuscitating a patient. Um, I do think that it is important that we maintain training with them. Many of our patients, say in a hospital or out of hospital setting, are gonna need quick access for those drugs. They may or may not have a peripheral IV in, and if they do, then that's great, but that's not always what we see. So to get that quick access, we've got to have an IO, and it's fast. It's really become the best practice in a cardiac arrest situation. It was a December morning. I don't remember anything, but I do know that I parked my car and apparently went into cardiac arrest. Co-workers that I had trained found me, called 911, started CPR, and they got me over to the emergency department. When they got me into the emergency department, there was an interprofessional team of healthcare providers that worked very hard on resuscitating me. And this included nurses, physicians, respiratory therapists, pharmacists, technicians, you name it. It was a big team. And they had to go through a process of figuring out what the cause was of my cardiac arrest. And they did all of the specific skills that they needed to do, such as excellent CPR, getting the defibrillator hooked up, managing my airway, and getting quick access using the IO because they knew that I would need drugs, fluids, and they knew that I needed them very, very quickly. It was suggested that maybe I had a pulmonary embolism and that a clot-busting drug would be what would save me. So the decision was made to go ahead and give that clot-busting drug. And because I had quick access, that clot-busting drug went in and started to break up that clot. 
and at that point I was transferred to the intensive care unit. After about five days, I came to. And during that period of time, I was very inquisitive about what had actually happened to me. I wanted to know, you know, who were the people that found me and what, what was possibly wrong with me and what did they do? Because I teach these life-saving skills all the time, I was particularly interested in a lot of these details. And one of the things that I questioned was, did I even get an I.O.? Because I had been teaching I.O.s for so long in the hospital setting. And initially I wasn't quite sure, but several clinician friends of mine who I spoke with said, yes, I saw it, they had an I.O. in you. And I was actually very, very happy to hear that the, the team had gotten this quick access to deliver these life-saving drugs and fluids. So when I came back from my cardiac arrest, I went back to teaching the things that I have been teaching for years. However, I really started looking at it in a different manner because all of these life-saving skills that I have been teaching were done to me. And I really have focused an awful lot on that aspect of how really important it is as a human being that survived this, that has been saved by these life-saving skills, including the I.O. And I'm really trying to get clinicians to realize that all of this is important. You know, quick access for the I.O. gives you access to, for those medications, those fluids, those things that are life-saving. And to me, it's just much more personal maybe than it was in the past, extremely important, and something that I really feel I can say I survived because of these life-saving skills. I'm Mary Holtschneider. I'm a nurse educator, and I'm in.